after cleaning the kidneys and lymph of their main toxins, which is a set of heavy metals, uh, wheel bearing grease, which, in, which will automatically also include motor oil, and plastic and rubber, and, and the dyes, the azu dyes, we're ready to clean something else, some other organ, and we will choose liver first because that's our highest priority in this case. So we made a complete set of liver uh, uh, parts and gave him that and also following that heavy metals out of the liver set. Each of those sets had about 12 bottles in them. Mm -hmm. And then you have started to work on the jaundice because the jaundice we described last time is due to two fungus varieties growing in the liver, making aflatoxin, but with a requirement for three or four heavy metals. And mm -hmm. since we took them out of the kidneys and took them out of the liver, we are already getting relief of the jaundice. Meanwhile, say for about the first four days, we spent that on cleaning the kidneys and lymph. And during that time, of course, the bilirubin went up. We didn't take a test every day to see it go up because that's research and we don't do that to every patient. Let's see. We, we have to see and be patient um, while cleaning the kidneys and lymph because if we start to clean the liver or any other place before the kidneys and lymph are cleaned, they're just going to get stuck in the kidneys mm -hmm. and cause a further problem. It doesn't work. We have to clean the kidneys and lymph first, then go to cleaning some other place and the highest priority in an emergency like this was the liver. Then we were ready even after just two days to take another blood test. So we had to wait for four days, that raised the total bilirubin, then after two days of treatment we can already see some results uh, on the new blood test. So we did that after six days and here we see the results. Go ahead. We have to be prepared, remember, for some improvements and some things getting worse. We just have to identify them and uh, start to cure the most crucial item. In this case, we could see that after six days, the alkaline phosphatase was already coming down uh, about 100 points. So we don't have to consider that the next emergency. We could see that the LDH, though, went up about 100 or so points. So that's going to be uh, chosen as our next emergency. We can see that um, the, trans the transferases, AST and ALT, uh, one improved and the other one got worse. So all together, we see that we have to work on the liver some more. And, we're, and we chose the dyes in the white blood cells and the dyes in the red blood cells as our most important next move. Mm -hmm. That the hemoglobin did not drop. It improved to 11.3. That's quite significant. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to worry about uh, his red count either, uh, which went from 4.75 to 4.79. So his blood's doing fine. We don't have to worry about his heart or, or ha him having a heart attack, which is often part uh, of, the, uh, of the liver failure problem. It often ends in a heart attack too.
The white blood cells went up from 10,000 to 12,000, so the body is well able to make new white blood cells, and hopefully they'll be without the dyes in them that the old ones had. And they will be once we have the problem treated. The platelets went from 268 to 343,000, and that's good too. Now we'll take a look at the other jaundice case and see the similarities there so that it will be easy to follow this liver program. Mm -hmm. Woman with jaundice uh, just developing, starting with a total bilirubin of 1.2. It doesn't sound like much, but as soon as it's over the top, we make that the top priority. And we did the same thing. We cleaned the kidneys and limb with drops. We then went to the liver. She's a person who was told there wasn't a single spot in the liver that, was, that wasn't cancerous. So we get started her on liver drops, a set of 12 bottles. And then right after that, metals, heavy metals out of the liver set in order to uh, remove the fungus growing in her liver and therefore not, to, not let the aflatoxin increase and therefore be uh, secure from jaundice to develop. In between uh, the first and second blood tests, I think we have had nine days from from 11.3 to 11.12, nine days, uh, and we didn't need to do it quite so quickly because she wasn't quite the emergency we thought that the that our uh, man was. So we pursued that the most, and actually the Billy Rubin rose from 1.2 to 1.4, but in between there, during those nine days, I think there was a peak. We characteristically see a peak until it is addressed, and then, uh, then Billy Rubin comes back down, and it would never come back down by itself, of course. So we had to remove the heavy metals and also do part two of the jaundice treatment. We discussed it before, it's the mercury part. When the mercury gets into the blood, it um, inhibits an enzyme called bilirubin oxidase. Then there is no bilirubin oxidase in any bilirubin that is arriving in the blood simply accumulates. There's no way for it to get out. But we did find the mercury in the case of the man. I'm not sure if we found the mercury in the case of the woman, but we were doing dental work on all of them. Mm -hmm. So we're discussing a problem with mercury with this patient, the female patient. We were doing uh, dental work on each of our uh, jaundice patients in order to remove heavy metals, of course. That's how the liver got full of its heavy metals, besides drinking water with all these heavy metals. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the problem with finding mercury in the dental wear is that very many patients have already removed their metals. They think they have removed their metals by changing their amalgam to plastic. And actually they haven't removed it because it was done in such a skimpy way that you can often see the amalgam as a, a, the bit of a dark edge around the plastic replacement. So that it's a problem removing old mercury from uh, teeth that have already had it replaced because it's hard to find, but of course the synchrometer makes it much easier. 
We do have a written protocol for that already to make it easier for the tester. But we did find the mercury for the woman and we removed all the teeth that still had mercury by extraction. She already had uh, uh, dentures for the upper upper jaw and and the left and right sides of the lower jaw, but she still had about eight left of her own teeth and actually seven of those still had fillings and some of those were replacements of amalgam. So we found the mercury and fortunately she had no objection. She was fairly young, early 60s. She wanted to live. She didn't choose to keep a very own tooth of hers or to keep a filled tooth instead of extracting it and adding to her denture. So she made all the right choices and uh, got rid of the mercury and got her bilirubin oxidase back right away. And the man uh, had a peculiar mercury problem where we had to search his old root canals for the mercury. We uh, contacted uh, his earlier dentist to find out which root canals uh, he had had, and he had thought that he had them removed way back then, but actually what was removed was what you could see at the top, namely the crown that's put on it, and the entire cavity, which is the root canal, had not been cleaned out at all. So we find the Wissa synchrometer by searching for rubber, because nearly every root canal is, has, has gutta percha rubber as part of it. But of course the rubber sticks to the bone and you have to use a technique of cleaning that old socket with, um, uh, with burr type drills that can uh, shear the rubber off the bone. But it's uh, fairly straightforward. He had had about six root canals, which undoubtedly gave him this rather early cancer experience. And uh, he got all that out and was free of mercury and also got his bilirubin oxidase back in time to have a happy result.